and welcome to episode one of our uh, first part of our controlling series on the London South sector. So if you haven't managed to watch the first video, make sure you go back so you can have a look and see what the controlling series is all about. And it'll really give you a good idea of what we're actually going to be doing in this series. But uh, if you have watched that video and now you're joining into the second one, which is actually going to be the start of the series, welcome in. And uh, for our first episode for the introduction to the London South sector. So in this episode, before we actually do any controlling, we're basically just going to talk about the sector, talk about all things to do with this sector, what you're seeing. Uh, I'm just going to run through things on the video of questions that I get asked so much. And uh, hopefully by the time you watch this video, you'll have a really good idea of who controls this sector, what airports are in this sector, uh, what all the different lines are, where the airports are. Uh, the levels that you climb aircrafts to and so on and so forth. So hopefully that will uh, this episode will give you a really good in-depth idea of what the sector is all about before you go and watch the next episode will actually be where we'll actually be controlling the sector. So probably the first thing that I'll start off with if, with this sector is practically what is it? So it's the south sector. It is what it means. It is the south of the UK. So... You've kind of got to imagine a line in the middle of Heathrow, which you can sort of see up here. A sort of a line in the middle of Heathrow. You can sort of imagine that things below that line is going to be your coverage on the south sector. There is a little bit more up here as well. Probably uh, the more higher level stuff. But if you imagine basically a massive line through Heathrow, the south stuff is controlled by... Or anything going southbound is controlled by the south sector. And if there was a central sector controller on, anything going north out of Heathrow would be controlled by that. So that's practically the sector uh, places that it borders on. So probably if I give you an idea, and this usually helps a couple of people sort of, sort of work out an idea as to where the... UK is in comparison to the sector. So obviously we've got the south coast down here and you can see that the sector does run a lot further than the south coast. So uh, we control alongside Paris. So when uh, when Paris are online, we control alongside them. Down here, the aircraft's going out this way will uh, be sent to Brest. Again, it does change. It depends what controllers are online, but sort of the main controllers that we would send aircrafts to so yeah we have a uh, paris on this border we have brest on this border these other borders up here along this side is usually the london west sector if they're ever online anything north of us going up this way is usually the central sector when they're online and we've got a uh, really little important bit of airspace just over here and uh, that goes out to brussels so Basically, it's, it's quite self-explanatory. The places going west of the sector go to our London West controller. Anything going north of the south sector goes to the central controller. And then I suppose the main people you need to be concerned with is the stuff going out towards Paris goes to Paris. The stuff rooting towards Brest goes to Brest. And the stuff that's rooting towards Brussels goes to Brussels control. So, yeah, that's probably one of the questions that I get the most of how do you know who to hand off to and how do you know uh, what level to climb them to to hand them off to the next controller. So levels and in terms of the levels that we hand off aircrafts to to other controllers, we're going to have a look at that a little bit later. But uh, what I'm going to do quickly is just turn off the coastline so you don't get too overcrowded with what's going on in the screen. So at the moment, I am logged on. I'm just logged in as an observer, but uh, I've got a highlight of the sector so we can see our uh, our sector in full flow. So probably that's the question of who do I know, how, where, who, do, how do I know who to hand aircrafts off to? And probably the question that I get asked the second most, if not the most, is where are the airports? Because when you're controlling in this view, obviously you look at it and think, I can see aircrafts. Like most people can work out that uh, the aircrafts on the screen are there, but then they can't quite work out where where the airports are. Where where are these aircrafts coming from, and where are these aircrafts going into that are descending into the airports? So if I zoom in a little bit for you, you should start to see 
some uh, some dotted lines appear up and they are basically the radar maneuvering areas so the rma is dedicated to the approach controller to to vector their aircraft into each airport so the two airports that i said in the introduction video that we focus on in the south sector is probably heathrow and gatwick we've got a uh, we've got london city we've got south end we've got farnborough we've got south uh farnborough Bournemouth and Southampton. You can see all of them up here. So under the Metars tab, we've got Metars for all of the different airports that we control. So you can see all the ICAO codes for the uh, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that nine? Nine, eight or nine or so airports that we control in the South Sector. Again, it depends. We may not be controlling them top down because there may be other controllers. There may be an approach controller. There may be a tower controller that deals with a lot of the responsibilities and stuff like that. But anyway, going back to the first question was basically where are the airports? Like, where are you looking for the airports on this screen? So when you're zoomed out, it's pretty hard to tell where the airports are. But when you start to zoom in, you do get to see a slightly better idea of where the airports are going to be showing up. So, for example, down here, you've got obviously London Gatwick, and then up here, you've got London Heathrow. So, two airports that geographically are, uh, you, you could imagine geographically where they are in comparison to what they look like on the scope. So, for example, I suppose the question I do then get is, okay, well, there's the airports. How do the aircrafts, how do the controllers know how to get the aircraft onto the approach. So these dotted lines here are the extended center lines, which are basically set up for the ILS approaches. So for at the moment in Tfrow, it's uh, runway 27 left. And then into Gatwick, it's runway 26 left. So they're both predefined. Again, if it was 08 right, it'd be switched around onto the other side like that. And if it was 09s at, uh, 08s at Gatwick, it'd be switched around like that. And then 09s at Heathrow, it'd be basically on the other side, just switch around. And... I suppose going on to that, people then ask, okay, well, I know where the airports are now. I know where the runways are for the airports. How do I then know how the controllers know when to descend aircraft? So every approach, if you have a look at a chart, there's a uh, there'll be an approach chart that says that you've got to be at a certain altitude at a certain point on the approach. So at uh, Gatwick, the platform altitude is 2,000 feet. So aircrafts can establish above 2,000 feet but they, uh, they have to be at 2,000 feet at a certain altitude, and that's when the exact ILS approach commences. So I think at Gatwick, it's probably something like six or seven miles to be level 2,000 feet to establish on the approach. So controllers know how many miles they basically need to give the aircraft to be at that certain level. So we know where Heathrow is. We know where Gatwick is. In terms of the next couple of airports we control... Uh, they're called Solent. So we've got Southampton down here. So we've got the extended centre line for Southampton. And uh, Bournemouth, we've got... So 20 Southampton and then runway 26 into Bournemouth down here. And you can see those extended centre lines both there. So Heathrow, Gatwick, Southampton, Bournemouth. Obviously, the main chunk of traffic that you will get is in and out of Gatwick. But obviously, you do still get Bournemouth stuff. Then moving up a little bit more to here, uh, London City which is surprisingly quite busy. You usually do get quite a lot of traffic into there. So the 2-7 approach into London City and then the 2-3 approach into South End. So those are the two approaches into there. Other place I've missed, Lid. We've got Lid down here. I mean, it's very rare you get a Lid arrival or a Lid departure. And at Farnborough, we've also got Farnborough down here, which obviously aren't as obvious to notice and their radar manoeuvring areas to vector the aircraft certainly aren't anywhere near as... Uh, Big as what they are at Heathrow and Gatwick. So those are the eight or nine airports that we control in our uh, sector. Then the next question, kind of going back to what I said earlier, is how do we know what levels to descend each aircraft to? How do we know what levels to climb each aircraft to based on who they're going to so in terms of the descent of the aircrafts it very much depends on the arrival so if i for example i'm trying to think of a certain arrival yes so there's the alesso one hotel arrival into london heathrow so alesso is all the way down here and it goes all the way into biggin 
up here at London Heathrow. And it's a question of that, well, how do you know how do you know what certain level to get an aircraft at by a certain time? So there are predefined points on the arrival as to the level that an aircraft's got to be. So the sectors that we control, we do know these arrivals inside out and we know what levels aircrafts need to be at. We know what levels aircrafts need to roughly descend at to reach that level. So the controllers that control on these en route sectors really have a fantastic idea of the different arrivals and the levels that they've got to be. So that's obviously the reason why we descend aircraft to a certain level. We may descend aircraft to a certain level based on other traffic around. So obviously we've got to ensure a thousand feet of separation. So we make descents based on the traffic and the routing of the other traffic and stuff like that. So that's the second way that we descend aircraft. Then probably a very, very, very... Uh, a very, very, very important one to remember is airspace bases. So, airspace bases are technically the level that an aircraft is uh, cleared, to, or an aircraft must stay above to not go outside of controlled airspace. So, for example, there is, it's not shown all the bases up, but uh, hang on, if I do display no do you know what i'll leave it as that so basically each uh oh, actually i think i've actually got yeah yeah there we go i was trying to think which one it was set up as yeah there is a different display for that so you'll see all these little different levels so you'll see 5500 in this box here you'll see uh flat level 65 in this box flat level 75 flat level 105 uh Anything different? 105 again. Yeah, so there's all different airspace bases. So aircraft's practic or basically can't descend below that level. Otherwise, they go outside of controlled airspace. So a controller will try and keep an aircraft inside that airspace base to make sure they don't go outside of controlled airspace. So, for example, if you're descending into uh, Gatwick, which is obviously going to be an airport that we're going to be controlling on the first couple of episodes with the series aircrafts are taken off this point here so they're taking off timber so initially they're able they're usually taking off timber something like that three fives of degrees something like that so they obviously go for a five thousand base they go for a three thousand base and then they go for a two thousand base so it's the airspace base plus 500 usually to round it up to the nearest uh the nearest whole number so two thousand feet three thousand feet 5,000 feet. So that's probably that. That's the third reason as to the levels that we descend each aircraft to, based on the airspace bases restrictions around, uh, based on the airspace bases and the restrictions that we can descend aircrafts to. Aircrafts can technically descend below an airspace base and be sent outside of control airspace, but that can be an absolute nightmare so just a quick one if you're wondering why the hell the lines have gone it's because the controllers that were currently controlling have just logged off but you can still see uh the outline it's sort of the uh sort of the lightest gray color actually i say that the controllers actually just come back online to uh to control so that's the airspace bases then i'm trying to think what the next one was yes the agreement so a question I always get is, how do you know what level to climb an aircraft to to then send to the next controller? So we have a massive document which basically shows us every level that a controller or, or an aircraft has to be leveled by a certain point or be, or be climbing to a certain level before they reach a certain waypoint to be handed off to the next controller. So you may be looking at this diagram thinking, what the hell how do you honestly manage to memorize all these different uh we call them standing agreements between different controllers uh and it's just so it's just so standard the the ones they they just become so second nature because you're so used to doing a uh, you're so used to controlling alongside so many people and knowing the certain levels that aircraft are climbed to and all that jazzy stuff so probably I mean, obviously you can tell. So the sector from this diagram or the the outline of this diagram is exactly the same outline as the scope as well. So there's nothing there that you should look at and think, oh God, I have no idea what he's going on about because it is exactly the same outline. So for example, 
I'll take an aircraft that's coming into my sector. So what I'll do is I'll go down to here. So down here, we've got uh, these three little uh, arrows. And then we've got two different agreed or, or three different agree levels. I'm sure the waypoint names have changed. I can't remember whether it is, whether it is still Gibso or not, actually. But uh, yeah, this is coming into my sector. So... This sector would be controlled over here, would be controlled by the West controller. And then once it gets to here, the aircraft would be sent to me. So, for example, any aircraft descending into Farnborough, Stansted, Luton, London City, Biggin Hill, Southend, Heathrow or Gatwick has to be at flight level 270 at these certain waypoints. So I would expect a controller to descend aircraft going into those destinations at the perfect time so they are level at those levels before they get into my sector. And then swing it on the other side. If I've got aircrafts going out of those destinations, Heathrow, Gatwick, Luton, London City, South End, Farnborough. So basically the total opposite of what we've got here. I have an agreement that I'm going to be climbing aircraft to flight level 260 and then send him across to uh, the West controller. So agreements work both ways in that I send an aircraft at a certain level. They will send an aircraft at a certain level. So that's one of the ones in terms of uh, who we're sending to. Probably a very common one that uh, you will see very, very, very often is people going out towards Brussels. So remember I said at the start of the video, this line up here is where the uh, where the Brussels sector is. So aircraft's going out of Luton, Gatwick, Stansted, uh, sorry, Heathrow, Gatwick, Stansted and Luton are climbed to flight level 250 to 290. So usually the level is, uh, is given as 290 and then it's sent to Brussels and then Brussels will have restrictions to us from that side of the sector coming into us. Uh, Paris. So we've got aircraft that are cleared out to certain levels based on where they're routing. Again, Max 290, Heathrow, Gatwick, Luton, London City, going out to Brussels, uh, sorry, going out to Paris, and then coming in from Paris, they've got certain levels that they must give us. And uh, so, for example, anything going into Luton, Stansted, Farnborough, and Southampton goes into Sosan minimum level, flight level 270. So depending on when the aircraft wants descent and all that jazzy stuff, they've got the agreement there. Uh, so those are the agreements in terms of the controllers at our sector boundary. Uh, going out towards Brussels, Paris, the other London sectors. Then we have obviously different agreements between the different splits in that sector. So... If I was on the south sector, there could be a terminal control sector of that sector. I know that sounds insanely confusing, but basically, to put it short, uh, to, long story short, is that terminal control will do the lower ATC side of things, so the lower level stuff. Controlling the same, pretty much the same sector, but just the lower down stuff up to sort of flight level 180 to 200, depending on... Uh, where the aircrafts are. And then the AC controllers controlling London South will control the higher level stuff. So again, agreements, if he was online between me and him, so let's say I was on South, the AC sector, and I was transferring to the TC sector. Uh, a common one, as we said, aircrafts on the Alesso 1 Hotel into Heathrow have got to be level 180 at Etvax. So I would descend aircrafts 180 at Etvax with the transfer then to the terminal controller and then the terminal controller's agreements coming out to me would be uh would be for example 180 out of Heathrow and Gatwick would come to me 180 out of Stansted nothing really comes out of Detlin as it says night only and then 170 at London City Big and Hill and South End and those people come to me again that might sound confusing and you may be like like well how the hell am I ever going to see that on the screen and over the three or four episodes you'll pretty much see 290 conan you'll see uh 180 at you'll see 
uh one three zero to tell two transferred to terminal self control or gateway director or something like that you'll see these levels so often because there, there, there's some of them on here that are so like hardly ever used but there's some that just happen pretty much every time you control so once you uh once you, you're you will definitely see him a couple of times into the uh into the sessions so that's how standard agreements work and again i'm obviously not going to be using that chart the the whole way through my control and i'm not going to have that up on the screen and stuff like that because the euroscope does it all for us and when people say how do you know them is yes we do know them through the agreements through the agreements chart but we also do know them because euroscope tells us to them so and that leads into a good point of now what do all the different boxes mean like what does what does the sector inbound list mean what does the sector exit list mean what does the departure list mean so in the sector exit list you so your sector inbound list is aircrafts that euroscope thinks that the controller will be controlling and your sector exit list is mainly going to be the aircrafts that you've got tagged up so when i say tagged up it's uh, it's called assuming an aircraft. Obviously, I can't assume an aircraft right now because I'm not controlling. But assuming an aircraft basically means or basically tells everyone else in your sector or around you that's controlling alongside you that you've got this aircraft and you're dealing with it. So aircraft sector inbound list are ones that m are likely going to come to you. And sector exit list is aircrafts that you've... Uh, or sharp the aircrafts that you've got tagged. And it's it's going back to the point of the agreed levels. Well... Where does that show on Euroscope? And you've got a perfect example here. So Wizz Air 420, for example. He's got a uh, cruise level of flight level 300. And he's going from Gatwick to Dublin. And if we was controlling on the London South sector. And there was a West controller online. We would have to hand that aircraft off. Inbound to Compton. Climb into flight level 150. And you can... Uh, see that that's a level that's been agreed between the two controllers in the standard agreements. Again, standard agreements can be thrown out the window. Controllers can make up their own agreements. If traffic workload permits, they can say, look, I've got this guy. Can you take him on a... Uh, can, can I have him on a direct, on a shorter routine or something like that? It can always be coordinated to be changed. So that's sector inbound list. That's the sector exit list. Just a few little bits and bobs on that. Obviously, you've got squawks up here. So the uh, the assigned squawk, the squawk that they've got set, the SID that they're on, the star that they're on, their departure and destination. You can pretty much work out where they're flying to and from from that. So that's those two ones. Obviously, we said earlier about the metars. So the ones that pop up in the metars are the airports that we're controlling. So Lyd, Southend, Farnborough, London City, Gatwick, Southampton, Bournemouth and Heathrow. So they're the eight or nine airports that we control in this sector. And then the departure list. So the departure list is obviously all the aircrafts going out of those eight or nine airports that you will be responsible for departing out most of the time. 50% of the time. So if there's ATC at Gatwick, if there's ATC at Heathrow, which there isn't at the moment, if there's ATC at these airports, then you won't see those departures. You won't see that departure list because the controllers on the ground will have that departure list and they're the ones that are controlling them. And you'll get them maybe uh, when they're ready for takeoff, if there's only a ground online, uh, when they're, if they're in the air, if there's a tower online. And uh, if there's an approach that controls them after departure, then you'd get them maybe a little bit further on if that's an agreement. But uh, out of Heathrow and Gatwick, even if there is an approach on, they do come straight to London. So what does the departure list show? Pretty much exactly the same as what the sector inbound and sector exit list shows, just their departure details. So their departure, their destination, their departure SID, the runway where they're departing on, their initial climb, and their school code that they are uh, that they need to set or have already set. And it uh it'll change their tag on the ground once they've got their school set. So that's the departure list, uh, sector inbound list, sector exit list, metars. Then I suppose the departure list then probably leads into the next point of, well, how if your controller, you, you've just said, Jamie, that 
you control airports top down and you give aircrafts instructions on the ground well how do you know where they are on the ground and we've got loads of different views to switch between so we've got different views of the london sector so this is the main sector with no airspace bases no nothing then we've got another screen which shows us the nav aids then the airspace bases and then all of the nav aids that actually show on the screen so they're the main they're the main views that we've got to actually switch between so we can see different parts of the sector and then we've got different buttons to then see the ground networks so we've got heathrow we've got gatwick we have got london city we have got Southampton, and then that one is Bournemouth. I think that's Bournemouth. Yeah, last one's Bournemouth. So you will, you may be like, oh, it could be Farnborough, actually, that one. I'm not sure. Somebody might know that one. If you do know, put it in the comments below. Uh, <laughs> I probably should know that, shouldn't I? But again, we can easily get to other places. Uh, actually, I'll be able to zoom out to work out where it is. It is, yeah. It's, uh, it's Bournemouth. I thought it was Farnborough. I don't know why. Bournemouth and Farnborough have practically got the same runway numbers. 2, 4, and 0, 6, and 2, 4. I think they're... Oh, no. Bournemouth is 2, 6, and Farnborough is 2, 4. Yeah, it's Bournemouth. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. We have got all the different ground networks. And even if there are ones that aren't in that screen, we can easily scroll about. So, we can get to Farnborough if we need it. That's Farnborough. Then we can get to London City on another screen. We can get to South End if we need to get to it. So just because they're not predefined on the number pad of the airports that we control, we can easily get to them. So I think that is practically... Uh, actually, no. Probably the, the main important one is the aircrafts themselves. So... What is what what's basically in the tag? Like obviously I think most people can work out that all of these people are the, the aircrafts that are flying, and most people know that from looking at the screen. But what's what's actually in the tag? Like how do you recall the level that you've cleared an aircraft to? So this Thomas Cook 8-7 Golf Roaming, there's another controller that's controlling this sector at the moment. So you'll see that he's got the LS tag on. So he's assumed that aircraft, like we said earlier. So he's told everybody else that's controlling alongside him that I've got this aircraft and I'm dealing with him. So the level, it's probably better to go with this Saudi, actually, because he looks like he's got some stuff in his, uh, in his tag. So we've got the aircraft call sign. So Saudi 889. This shows his level that he has been or the level that he's currently at or climbing through or descending to then below that is his destination code again destination codes change and and depend on the routes and or it's not destination codes it's the where they route out of the sector so the thomas cook and the saudi have pretty much got identical routing codes because they're both going out via conan over to brussels so that's the routing code. Then you've got the level. Oh, I don't think that's gone very well for the Saudi, actually. He uh, seems to be a bit slow on that turn. But uh, the level that he's been cleared up to. So he's been cleared to flight level 180 by the London control. Then the heading that he's been given. So 0, 90 degrees. Again, it might not show a heading because he may just be on his routing. So, for example, this German wings behind him is not on a heading. He's only been cleared to a level. And if he's not been assigned a heading, it will just... If there's nothing in the heading box, you just assume that uh, they will stick to their routing. Uh, so that's that. Then you've got the ASP box, which is the speed. So I don't think there's anybody that's on a speed at the moment. No. But if uh, if anybody is on a speed, it will show up in there as ASP. It say something like S220, so 220 knots, or S250, 250 knots, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that's that for the speed. And then I'm just seeing if anyone's got a direct... Ah, I think that Ryanair... Yeah. So in the heading box, instead of it being on a heading, the uh, the Ryanair 6 Sierra November has got a direct to that on. So instead of him uh, having a heading in his, uh, in his tag, he's got a direct, which goes in exactly the same as heading, but just as direct instead of heading. So, yeah. 
I think that's pretty much everything that I was going to go through in that uh, in that episode. I know it's definitely a lot to take in, and you may sort of watch that and think, wow, that was a hell of a lot of information. But I hope now you've been able to watch this video, and once you move on to the next video, you will have a really, really, really good idea of actually what's going on in the sector. You'll know where everything is. You'll know where the airports are. You'll, uh, you'll know a bit about the aircraft tags. Again, it's not like in the next episode I'm going to just be totally silent and not say a word. And I'm going to explain what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to come back to this video to have a good idea of, uh, of really what's going on. So thank you for watching. As always, make sure you chuck a, uh, a like, subscribe to the channel. And I'm proper back on YouTube now. So any comments you've got, anything you want me to clarify, then uh, then do chuck it in the comments. I'm sure there'll be other people that look at the comments as well. And hopefully they will answer you even if I don't get a reply uh, across to you. But thank you. I hope you enjoyed episode one of the introduction to the, uh, the London South Sector. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in episode two where we'll uh, actually be controlling. See you then. Thanks, guys. Take care.